I'm Sarah. I'm Heather. And we're Okanori. We've shared the Palm Springs Retreat and the Modern Aussie Resort. But we're bringing you something new and completely different with Dream Home Sit. It feels spacious and homely. Yeah, I think this is our winner. It's a new build and we're building to sell. So there's a lot at stake because it's all about the buyer. We've been knocked back. The feel here is really nice. I love green. We take it from being a house to a dream home. When we're building to sell, we often like to look at the location and the demographic of who we're going to sell to. So we chose the Bellrose 27 from Better Built Homes and we're going to you know, do some upgrades, add to our inclusions. When designing and building to sell, we really put a lot of our own personal preferences aside and think about the buyer and what the buyer might like. We've changed the facade quite a bit on this Bellrose design. We're going for a more cottage look because we feel like that suits that rural setting to give it that cosy country cottage feel that we want for this home. Having lived in so many different homes myself, a dream home to me not only needs to look good, but really needs to be a dream to live in. It needs to be practical. We're at Better Built Homes Display Home today to go through our tender presentation, which will include the results of our soil tests and our contour surveys. Now it's really important to get this information up front because that helps us to get a fixed price tender and we won't get any nasty surprises later on. It'd be lovely to have you in our office today. Very excited to be uh, presenting this tender to you both. So this yep. is the reports that we get back from our surveyor. First, I think we'll start by looking at the plans. Yes. So it's an uphill split. So you've got a couple of steps in the middle of the home. Yep. Um, and the beauty about this is that it's going to reduce the cut at the back and the retaining walls aren't going to be as high as the back. Okay. And you'll have more of an architectural feel in the middle of your, your home. So you'll step up and instead of it being more of a landscaping problem, you're dealing with it in the middle of your home. And so what does that mean through the front here then if we've got steps going up the middle of the house? So that means you'll have um, raised ceilings at the front. Okay, so we've got a drop edge beam. Basically with the, the drop edge beam, it pretty much acts as an internal uh, retaining wall for us. Yes. If we didn't put it in here, yes. we would have had to cut and remove more soil from the site yes. and we would have then ended up with a massive retaining wall out the back. and. It's a more cost effective way of doing it. The more retaining walls you need to build, the higher the cost yeah. and the soil removal. Which Isn't great. It adds up so quickly and then that's, you know, less money for you and I to spend yes. on the fun, pretty yes. stuff. It's always really good to have your first time out on site. It's a really cracking spot out here. The feel here is really nice. Uh, one of the things we did notice is that to comply with the um, design guidelines at the estate where this is being built, you can't have full cladding. Um, you do need a mix of materials. So our suggestion would be um, is that we render the bottom half of the home and, and have it a similar colour to the clad. <sighs> We've been knocked back with our original exterior selections. Um, not by council, but the developer wanted two building materials on the front facade. So our original plan was to have it fully cladded because it's only 13 metres wide. We wanted to keep it simple. Now we can't do that. So our solution has been to um, render the bottom half and we're just gonna paint it all the one colour so it's nice and consistent. The frames are up, the roof's on, and the guys are getting ready to start cladding. Because of the climate we're in here, condensation from inside the home and moisture entering from the outside can increase the risk of mould growing on the frames. So the guys are installing this isolation wrap from Fletcher Insulation, and essentially what it does is protects the home from water penetration and allows moisture vapours to escape. The isolation wrap reduces drafts and dust entering the home and helps your internal insulation work more effectively. The better your internal insulation performs, the heating and cooling of the home is more efficient and cheaper to run. So Claudia, we need to choose our external tiles and this is really cute, I'm liking this. The style of the home is cottage charm. Now, yeah. is this suitable to use outdoors? 
It is. This tile comes in an external finish, which means it's a bit grittier, making it perfect for, you know, entryways, around pools, stuff like that. Does it possibly come in a colour that's a little bit lighter? It does. It comes in one that's slightly lighter and a bit greyer, a bit more okay. of a grey tone. Um, Let's have a look. Should we have a look? Yes. It's beautiful. I'm really liking this. It's got that classic, authentic look that it looks like real natural stone, so it's not going to date. But it's, it's interesting enough. Yeah, yeah, with all the different variation in the pattern that we see here. We've come down to our local real estate agent today, Ray White, and I have personally used them in the past. They have such a wealth of knowledge and they're the first person we go to to show our floor plans so they can advise us that we're making the right decisions for the demographics of the area and that we come out with the best outcome at the end. So this is the floor plan of the home that we are, we're building. Yep. And what we would love to discuss with you is who you think our target audience will be. The core demographic for this market will be second home buyers. And also there's a really strong market for downsizers. We always like to add the oak and orange touch, which is family friendly living, yep. low maintenance, and lots of storage. Lots of storage. Yeah, which you've nailed. Building to sell can be stressful, but getting Robert's perspective helps us to combine our design style with what the buyers want to see. Biggest feedback that we get from buyers is generally around storage and the floor plan. So they want nice open living area off the kitchen. And then for downsizers, they don't want to come in and do anything. For them, it'll be about appliances. They're going to be doing, you know, more entertaining with family and things like that. So they're going to want open plan living off the kitchen again, al fresco. I have so much confidence and reassurance now that we've been in to see Robert. I know that we've made the right design choices for potential buyers. All right, it's time to pick external paint colours. Yes, always a big decision. Let's have a look and see. I know it's only a slight difference, but I'm feeling like I like the contrast here a little bit more. And I do love the green, but I have some concerns about that. It's a little bit more risky, isn't it? I love green. We like it. Not everybody loves green, and we are building to sell, and we want as many people to fall in love with the home as possible. I agree. It's still got that slight greeny blue undertone, which we wanted, and it's just got that bit more contrast than this lighter one. So, yes. yeah, I think this is our winner. Whether you're building or renovating, the challenge with selecting your external colours is it needs to be done very early on in the piece. So here's our hot tip. Check your plans and see what orientation your facade faces and make sure you look at your selections in the same orientation and at different times of the day. I'm here at the Better Built Homes office to meet Blair, the colour consultant, to finalise all our selections for the home. Thank you so much for coming in today. So what we're going to do is we're going to finalise all of your external colours and make sure everything creates a really nice flow from the outside through to the inside awesome. of the home. Awesome, that's what we want. When selecting our roof colour, we don't just go by what colour is going to look great. We also think about how it's going to impact the home and the temperature within the home. In this house, we've chosen Surf Mist because from previous experiences, we have learnt that a lighter colour will help regulate the temperature in the home better than a darker colour. We're right at the final stages of the build and the concrete for the driveway has been poured. For a nicer finish, we use Dulux Avista's concrete sealer. The colour we've selected is blue gum. So we found this gorgeous external wall light from Barn Light Oz. And one of the things we had to get right with this light was not just the height positioning, but also the projection. So we found one that didn't sit out too far, that was nice and close to the wall. I know I was super cranky about having to change that front facade. I remember. I got that phone call. <laughs> yes, you did. 
Um, but I think it's worked out well in the end. It has. Gosh, I'm so happy with how those floor tiles turned out in the alfresco. Yes. They're just so warm against the cool tone of that cladding. And because there's only two materials out there, I think laying in that French pattern was the right thing to do. It just feels like it's added more interest out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. It feels spacious and homely and it's just a beautiful spot to sit. Possibly the biggest change we made to this. And it looks amazing. That creates a sense of height in that space, but not everything needs to be traditional. All right, let's do it. That is a nice wide entry. Just screams what the whole home is about.